Hello everyone, welcome to this week's garden tour. If you're new here, I'm gardening in New York City. This is considered zone 7B. And I have been trying to do these tours weekly so you can follow me around my journey and see the challenges that I face. And this is one of them. A lot of cars and street traffic here in New York City. But I'm doing these tours every week so you can uh, watch in real time the progress of the garden with me. And also learn along the way, you know, learning, watching from other people's experiences is such a good, great way to learn. I'm also learning myself. I'm trying to also learn as I go, right? Learn as I grow with the garden. Together, I'm growing with the garden as well. And this week's a very, it's going to be a very exciting one because it's finally got hot here in New York. It's, we have a lot of sunlight, sunshine right now too, and the plants are growing really, really fast. I've noticed a lot of blooms in the garden that I'm very excited to show you. And there's all these beautiful peas that I have to harvest too. I'll probably harvest after the garden tour, but I want to show you guys a few tips on when do you know is the time to harvest your peas. And I also have do, done a few changes on my raised beds, my green stock, my vertical towers that I used to save space here in New York too, are doing amazing. I took one of them down and I'm going to show you guys in a minute just to amend the soil and do a little bit of maintenance and I'll explain to you guys everything about it. The third one that I just got recently, it's doing really great with my lettuces and I have a tomato in there that got really big. I had to add an extra support and I'm gonna show you guys how I did that too. Also, a little bit later in the video, we are going to the plot garden, which is a space that my neighbor allows me to garden there and we just we share the harvest when it's time to come. So we have been having a lot of weeding problems in here. I say that on every single video if you haven't watched them, I'm gonna put a link to them all below this one but finally i actually took the advice of jess from roots and bear fish farm and i got this cobra neck weeder so we're gonna do some weeding my partner's gonna help me too with that and then we got mulch it was on sale this weekend so it was easy for us to get so we got some mulch and we are going to cover the beds where the more mature plants are stay tuned for the whole I think today is going to be a really fun one. I'm very excited about it. Starting over here, I have the peas that was just showing needed to be harvested, and I'm going to give a few pointers for you guys if you guys have never grown peas before. But look at that here on the top. This magnolia tender peas, they grew much taller. Those are sugar snaps, the one in the bottom with the green pods, and these beautiful ones with the purple uh, flowers are magnolia tender peas. I got both of their seeds from Baker Creek's Herbalum Seeds. I do live in the city, so unfortunately the background of my beautiful garden is lots of cars on the street. There's an avenue that I actually live in Queens and it's quite busy, so I can never have this beautiful greens without anything around, so it's going by. Anyways, more peas. This is how the pods will look like. Some of the peas, the flowers that came earlier, already produced some peas. And they're going they're very young they're much younger the difference between this and this guy over here those are more mature the uh, this bottom piece here they flowered first and they produced all of this first when you're growing peas um, or a lot of other vegetables really the same same with the pot of tomatoes or beans you want to make sure that you keep harvesting them because as many vegetables or things that we grow, their main intuit or the main objective is to reproduce. So what they're doing now, the peas are actually the seed pods of the plants. And if we harvest all of them, the plants gonna want to produce more. So you'll send more flowers and it will keep and it'll produce more peas. Now, if we left also some of the seed pods to get mature and we don't harvest them a little early enough or when it's good for us to eat, which is still a little green and tender, then the plant also is gonna think, oh, I've done my job. I have, uh, I have mature seeds that drop on the ground and so I, they will die because they have completed the life cycle per se. To keep your peas productive or your tomatoes productive or your beans productive, it's a very good practice for you to keep harvesting them and not let them get fully mature as well. So with the peas, I'm going to harvest in one here. Every time you're harvesting peas, just make sure you use both hands. The plants themselves are very fragile. If you just pull, you can pull the whole plant believe me it happened to me last year so I learned the hard way so I always with both hands I hold the stem with one and I pull with the other one and I get my pea this one is a nice uh, this is sugar it's not pea so it's I can eat the pods it's not as big as if you would grow in the peas with the shelling peas they usually get a little bit longer and they have more peas inside them and 
they will just that you will be able to kind of see the piece more if you can tell that. And maybe if I, if I was growing some of them, it would be easier for to explain. But these ones, if I get a little closer, this one, you see that the pod is kind of like fat. You know, you see that it's nice and full. Almost looks like it's like bursting. So that's a good time. That's a good size for you to pick them. Other than when they're still skinny, I'm gonna show you some so it's easier here. Other than this one here that you can see that, see the difference? It looks skinny and it's just and it's still kind of quite small, it's only about two fingers. When they're ready, then we're gonna look more like this guy. They're thick. This is for sugar snaps, okay? And the size is nice and good. So I have a lot of ready to go here. I have to harvest by this weekend because I do want to get more peas. Since my peas are not getting yellow at the bottom yet, that's the first sign you get when it's getting too hot for them. Mine still look very healthy, They're very nice and tall. So I'm going to make sure that I pick everything, all the big ones this week. So the peas, and then once those get mature, I keep picking them too. So they're hopefully send more flowers and produce more peas so I can have a longer harvest. Now, I'm actually going to try this one because that's why we grow food for to eat. So, but uh, you can eat. Oh my god, I'm so sweet. You can eat them right off the pod. Mm, so good. When you picking them, lots of gardeners say that peas are their favorite snack, morning snack, because you can pick them while you're doing your garden chores. I definitely did that last year. I had peas in the morning so many times. It's really delicious. Let me show you how it looks inside. Nice and juicy. Let me see if that can change this camera. So here it is, nice and it's nice and juicy inside. And the pod is completely full. It was really good. Okay, my camera just shut off, so I hope I didn't lose all of that. But this Harma tomato is actually a determinate tomato. I have to make a video about that too. It means that you don't need to prune it. Ah, there you go. Early in the morning, church bell time. That's that church. Right there is a good church, you see? Okay, this is a brown tomato. This is a determinate tomato. I have a very good growing here. There's some new flowers. I'm just gonna show one here real quick because I think it's really pretty. Remember the pansy I showed last week? It actually got much bigger. It kinda got pink, so it's so pretty too. And this guy over here also bloomed. And I love the little details on that too. Those seeds are from Hudson Valley Seed Co. So I also planted this eggplant here. More people with loud cars. Well, music in the car. The squash is finally uh, starting to pick up here. I have direct sold on squash here. This is a patty pan squash, so it's the yellow round one. I'll show you guys hopefully if I get some harvest. We made it there in the corner, it's looking really good, getting really big, getting to get pruned. And the borage that I showed last week too look at good tile, and the, you can see the buds now. I'm very excited to see some more flowers. These potted tomatoes over here are producing flowers. I'm so excited about it. So if you want to hand pollinate your tomato flowers, we get go with your finger and they'll shake it them around like this. Tomato are perfect flowers, so they have the male and the female organs in the same uh, flower. So you just need to get the pollen to get mixed up over there and we'll pollinate. It's different than squash. Squash have male and female flowers, but once I have flower for them, I'll show you guys how that looks like. Or you can shake the plant, the whole plant every day. I'm gonna do that with this other one too, to make sure they're just helping with the pollination. I don't have bees in here, but a little extra help. Doesn't hurt, right? So those flowers over here is from a different tomato plant. This here, it's a heirloom tomato. You see how much bigger than look that the one I just showed you? Those first ones are probably fused blossoms. That's very common on heirloom varieties. They will just fuse together and make this funky fruit that many times we buy, the, uh, we see at the markets. Uh, it tends to happen on the first sets of fruit uh, flowers from them. Some gardeners, they choose to pick them out and not let them go. I am not, I am letting them 
do their thing and see what we end up with but i have planted some beans this is new this is a little bamboo trellis i made with some pole beans i'm just curious to see if they would grow up here the pot's is small so it's a gamble but i wanted to experiment anyways because i had seeds and i had the pot my green stock first difference this one over here only has a first layer on it which is kind of cool because you can see how it looks like without the the tower the rest of it is here I was going to do some maintenance, but then I thought, wait a minute, I should probably do this on video so you guys can see what I'm doing too. So I got this green stock, um, for the ones that do not know, they look like this when they're put together. I have three of them. This one is really looking great, blooming. But going back to here, I've got this green stock in February, this vertical planter. And I have planted broccoli and kale, a lot of cool other crops in here, but now it's end of May, it's getting really hot. So uh, it's been a few months, I want to amend the soil. I have already put some peppers in here. You can see that when I did that, I the soil up here, yeah, I amended the soil to come up to the top. I added some more soil as well. But you can also see that some of these layers of soil is really low. So I'm going to add an inch, about an inch of compost in here to help feed in the soil. I did go ahead and already transplant it because I was too excited, but it's okay. I'm just going to put it around the stem. I don't think it will hurt to plant. This is a bean there, a direct soil. And I'm doing that with all these layers here. I might not do it on the video right now, but I just wanted to explain to you what I'm doing. And they also come with these watering discs over here. That's the coolest thing about the planters. They have this built-in watering system. So what happens is... I washed them already. I wanted to wash because sometimes dirt gets in there and gets clogged and then they leave right here in the middle and you, when you're assembling them make sure that the holes are facing the plants that you have. The way it happens, this works, is you get this water reservoir on top and each one of these layers have one of these discs. One of these, you fill the water here, you put the water on top here and then goes through this hole and each hole will fill one of these discs so once the disc gets full then goes the next one and gets the next one that one gets the water in there and the water slow drips through these holes to your plant so it's a very cool slow drip watering system how cool is that so this is what i'm going to do when i finish here i'm going to amend the soil and put this planter back up together so i can save space and as you can see it gets very crowded really soon here in my little tiny front yard so having them growing vertically is a great space safer for me okay so this is the compost that i'm using it's local it's from the lower east side ecology center so i'm gonna use this my compost not ready yet to this i also have warm castings i'm going to top my green stock with it I'm just gonna actually kind of I could use a little shovel but i don't know what it is so i'm just going to do this real quick we don't need much up to one inch and then over here the water that's why the watering disc stays in this area so i'm just going to put this around to top it off and very importantly this goes around the stem and here's a mustard i volunteered in there probably pull it out and there's a carrot <laughs> there too probably from a seed that fell from my hand but i might use those pockets for something like a wet, warm weather crop for this summer but here it is, so I just fill all the way to the top in here, can even put a little bit more on the ones there I have already filled a fill of this on this side here, those are flowers too a little bit more I'm going all the way up to the rim here and the watering disc would now leave here, you have to put them in before you put in the planters back up I had washed this but now some dirt just went through it from the compost so just put in the center make sure you aim those holes to the pockets so they're all facing the plants have been there and that's it i'm gonna do that in all of them and put them back together by the end of the day today a few things on that side if you can see i put in my lettuce there in the shade because it was right here on this table before i moved it around to there because it's really hot here in, the, in New York now so I wanted to give them shade so they don't bolt so fast some of the stuff on my green stalk here is bolting because it is getting too hot but not all I still have those lettuces growing beautifully in there 
uh, that kale on the top is doing really well those two kales that I harvested in the video last week see how big they are compared to last week already uh, they are also are doing okay I'm gonna keep them in there until they can't handle anymore for the heat and I have this beautiful lettuce over here too all kinds of different lettuces on this one this is a leaf planter it's meant to put lettuce and other hood queens I have also bok choy there it's ready to go see how big those guys are this is a tiny hindi bok choy so it's supposed to be a very small variety but i think i might have let it grow too big which is okay i'm going to harvest bok choy did amazing on that planter as well that i had so i am definitely growing again but this one here got too hot for it and bolted this ones are still okay so i'm gonna go ahead and harvest all of this after finish filming this video too I decided to put a tomato in here my partner and I wanted to see if um, it would work I mean and it's doing so good you see how big the tomato is this plant support here you can find it at the stock website but I actually added a string and I just put give the tomato some support like that there's a little yellow jacket here helping me with pest control Predatory wasps are good for the garden. They eat aphids and soft body insects, but just be very careful because they can be aggressive. So disclaimer, if you have kids or animals, just be careful with them. I'm letting that one be that's been visiting me for a while and it's taking care of my aphid problem. Or just make sure that you are aware that they can get aggressive, but they are um, a natural way to do pest control if you're willing to have them in your garden. The overwintered peppers, doing amazing, growing really fast. Look how much bigger they are now. I was a little worried about them that took them out too early, but hey, nature is just doing its job in providing. So this is, they're doing really good. I did not label those when I overwintered, so, but I do know that this one is a puma pepper because of this gorgeous foliage. Look how beautiful this is. And my potato is looking really big there. I have another potato growing, the one that needs to add more soil later. This is a cucumber that it's going to leave up there once I kind of organize this. I want to push this green stalk to the side, put the cucumber there, and that bed frame that I rescued is going to be my cucumber trellis. It's very sturdy. I have attached here with some zip ties. Make sure it's nice and attached to the fence, the existing fence, but that gave me a few other layers up so I can um, do a sturdy trellis for a few other things if I need to, but I wanted to have it in there. Oh, there's a good thing that happened to this here, a really good thing, it's talking about natural pest control. I had a lot of aphids, gray ones in here, I don't know if I got to show you guys last week, I think they're called cabbage aphids. Some other people in my region say that they had them and their stuff they're both in too. Those are the seed pods for the kill. And look what happened here, a spider just made a home, you can see how the, try to hold it in here on the one of these flowers and I think they ate most of the aphids here. I can hardly find any. Let's see if I can actually find some so I could show you how it looks like. But no, it looks like they did a pretty good job clearing them out so I'm super happy about that. And this is a really good thing of having a diverse garden and planting a lot of different things. You attract all these bu different bugs to here, you make good habitats for them and they help you controlling the environment too so I'm super grateful for these spiders that are living right there something I was actually very excited to show you guys this, look at this this is an orchid cream nasturtiums from Baker Creek Seeds look at this gorgeous painted color I don't know this gorgeous nasturtium is so beautiful this plant is all edible you can eat the leaves we always use them in fine dining restaurants I've used them for a long time when I was living in culinary school. For the flowers, there we can also use them in the plates to make beautiful plates so you can separate their petals. We use that a lot too, but just look at this gorgeous variety of in Aoi. It bloomed this morning, I just noticed. I'm so happy to see this. Okay, so this is mostly what I got from for this side. I'm gonna go to the pot soon and we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys the cobra head tool and uh, I'm gonna use it and I'll show you guys how to use it too and we're gonna add some mulch in there and we'll see how things are looking on that side as well all right and here I am it's a little hot today it's just this lenses there you go and I'm gonna show you guys the compost or the mulch sorry we got all of this it was on sale this weekend and then he just went back to the house to get more for us out guys we have roses 
so excited about it. A little careful here because this is walking. Look at this beauty. Red roses. They just bloomed all this week. Isn't it amazing? I love them. Since we were here, grapevine really starting to take over. Growing really fast. Super excited. And this is how the ground looks. Gotta go step with care there because it's getting the pathway is almost getting taken over and check out this mint from last week to this week see the difference crazy that sage not doing very good needs to be watered it's calendula here looking really good looks like we have a little bud there means we're gonna have a flower soon super excited all right and here is the cobra head weeding tool that i was talking about weeding tool if you're new here and you don't know i'm from brazil so pardon my english sometimes but here is the Corba head tool. This was a recommendation from Roots and Refuge, like I said. So apparently the good thing... Oh, New York City. One second. This tool here, you just... The soil is really hard because it's dry. But it's supposed to just go from the bottom. And you are able to get the... From the roots. So it's supposed to make weeding much easier. All right, so we are mostly done here. Look at the huge difference. It took us a little while, but Danny, my partner, is really good at it. So he did decide he went very troll for everything. So now it's looking like you can actually see what we're growing here and what were weeds. I spotted one there. But I want to show the sweet shard over here. Look how huge this guy is. It's getting some leaf miner, just like I showed in the other videos, but I'm not going to pull this out because it hasn't gone to flower yet. I am going to take out the damaged leaves, but I want to see how long this guy, look at this, if it was, this is cool, how long this guy is going to make it here. We decided to put out the weeds in the compost pile. Okay, this is how it looks like. It's hot and we're a little bit uh, sweaty in here, but then it's already coming with the mulch. Okay, we're gonna try to use one of these big bags per bed. Hopefully that will also not only suppress the weeds but keeps the soil moist and the water won't evaporate so fast. Another huge benefit of mulching is once you water things, there's water in your beds, there's no backsplash from the soil. The soil sometimes have like fungus or bacteria that can get to the leaves of your plants when you're uh, watering you spray splash back and then can give like blight or some other fungal disease to the leaves so if you put mulch and have the big layer between the soil and the plant that will also help with um, keeping those things in the soil not splashing back to your leaves so that's a huge benefit mulching is great we tried to get free mulch from the city but we couldn't get a delivery here so we decided to buy their instead their own sale then it's just setting them up here Okay, so how are you looking? Much better? We are going to plant other things in here too. So if I want to plant something in here, I will just push the mulch around, plant it and leave it like this and cover back. But those weeds are just hard, but here it is. I'm going to fix those little strings soon. But now we have some of our bad mulch. Just I'm so tired. It's looking really good. We'll try to do it on the other side too, but so far, so for now, we just did this. Because also we had way more weeds on this side than on that side, so let's just see how it goes. All right, Danny's here to say hi, and we're just gonna end the video here. We're a little tired, so. If you like this video, make sure that you give a thumbs up. That really helps us with the YouTube algorithm and just helps our video be shown to other people. So thank you so much for hanging out with us and I'll see you next time.